I go out. When you watch Fences and you look at Troy's and his choices, uh, initially you get a negative uh, reaction, but then when you try to understand him, go beyond what we see, we find that this is a good man who has been unjustly treated. I mean, this is a man who had big dreams and he ended up collecting garbage. Mm. Um, is this a fair assessment of, of him and his behavior? You know, the thing about great writing, August Wilson, Eugene O'Neill, you name it, Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams, there, there's so many layers. It's not just one thing. It's open to interpretation. You know, I've heard people say things, well, I felt he was this and that. And I was like, oh, I never thought about that, but okay. You know, mm -hmm. he, 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 uh, people ask me, well, what do I want them to get from the film? I say, well, it depends upon what they bring to it. So y y what you see in Troy or feel about Troy has to do with your own life and, you know, standards and, and all of you. Well, it's not only about anybody's life, it's uh, in a way, he personifies the uh, black American experience. He's somebody who, had he not faced the racial discrimination, he could have been a great athlete, a star. But because of that, he ended up a garbage collector. Mm. And perhaps this self-destructiveness, is it the, do you think, is it the, the, was caused, was it caused by racial discrimination? And is that the effect of racial discrimination on people. Here's, the, here's the thing you got to remember when you talk about racial and you talk about discrimination. Maybe, what if he just wasn't good enough? See, it's so easy to just say, oh, it's because of this. It's because of racism. Oh, I didn't get the job because of that. Maybe you weren't good enough. Maybe, like his wife says, you were just too old. Why don't you, she says, why don't you just admit it? You were too old. He's the one that's hung up on, I would, you know. But we know for a fact that so many talented African Americans who don't achieve their goals or they're pre prevented or deprived from achieving their big dreams because of their skin color. And I'll give you an example, Globetrotters, they were much better basket players than the white guys, but they were not allowed to play in the big league. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it is the, so the problem is the racial discrimination? The, the right word is not is, was. Was. And that's not the only problem. That's one of the problems. Now, you can make it the only one if you'd like, but it's, it's not the only one. But that's a fact. That's a fact. They couldn't play basketball in the NBA. Well, their grandfathers couldn't walk on the sidewalk, or mm -hmm. they were slaves. So each generation is trying to do better for the next generation. That's what Rose could see by wanting her son to get an education, but Troy couldn't see. For him, his son doing better was him getting his son a job at the, at the uh, sanitation department. For his wife, the son doing better was getting a good education and going to college. So each generation, regardless of race, each generation, Polish, African-American, whatever, is usually trying to help the next generation do better. You said was. You mean is it better now? Uh, an African American doesn't face these obstacles. These we're sitting in the Four Seasons, <laughs> talking about a movie. Uh -huh. We wouldn't be doing this in 1957 unless my name was Poitier. There's only one. There was only one person then. But yeah, so things are better, no question. Because when you read, uh, for instance, Obama's uh, audacity of hope, uh, he highlighted this issue. He said, "I understand uh, the Black American anger that he's not giving the same opportunities." Because if they were given the opportunities, they would achieve much more. Mm. Do you agree with him? Yeah, I, I agree he has the right to say that. One might use the word anger. Someone might use the word opportunity. You know, what are you going to do with it is, is the point. We all have reasons or we might feel righteous reasons to be angry. But the point is, what are you going to do about it? What, Not, do you, what do you think? What are you going to do about it? Go watch the movie. That's one of the things <laughs> I've done about it. It's true, you have done a lot mm -hmm. to uh, explain and tell us and enlighten us about the, Amer the African American experience in many of your movies. Um, and that's what August uh, Wilson was doing. But when you look back at the movies we've, we've been seeing in Hollywood, I don't recall seeing a Fences movie or something, a movie that brought me into an intimate 
uh, uh, closeness to well, Francis, African American. August Wilson is one of the greatest writers in American history. Uh, in the theater, there's Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams, August Wilson, Edward Albee, Eugene O'Neill, uh, Neil Simon. He's one of the all-time great masters in the history of American theater. So he touches on areas and, and he, he, he touches on things that are that are universal I, I we were doing a q and a the other day uh, we had a screening and someone's they asked they said i didn't i didn't know uh, uh troy was polish <laughs> or, or whatever <laughs> however he said it uh, you know so it, it the themes are universal the universal stems from the specific this is specifically an african-american family but betrayal and Frustration and, and, and going outside the matter, adultery and all those th themes are, are universal themes. Uh, they are indeed universal, but he universalizes them. They, because, I mean, he is someone who was inspired by Malcolm X, who I think you Are know you him better. talking about now August Wilson? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, you know Malcolm X. I thought you meant Troy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> really? Yeah, maybe you know something I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of Malcolm X in him. <laughs> But he's an equal opportunity hater. He doesn't like anybody. You're black, white, Jackie Robinson, oh, he ain't nobody. Hank Aaron, nothing. He doesn't like anybody. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's interesting that you reach that point. I mean, maybe this is the self-destructiveness that when you're not given the opportunity, you become mm. bitter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, again, when I uh, want to talk uh, about Hollywood, do you think those stereotypes, and this is actually Obama uh, pointed out, the stereotypes that uh, have been uh, presented about African Americans in the movies has have affected uh, the society's treatment of African Americans. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and do you feel now things have changed? And things have been changing. It, it didn't start this week. Mm -hmm. I've been in this business 40 years. In the 40 years, things have changed a lot. Things are continually changing for the better. But when you look now at what's going on outside uh, in the political sphere, um, and you see the emergence of white supremacists and racists. You see the emergence? It didn't emerge this year. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I, what I'm saying is we are regressing in some way. Right. Those guys, we thought we Im eliminated them, well, you can't and suddenly they are you back. You understand this. You can't legislate love. You heard what I just said? You can't legislate love. You can change laws, but you can't legislate people into loving you. It takes time, and it depends upon what's going on in their home. You can change the law, but if you go home and teach your son how to hate every day, it doesn't matter what law has been changed. Until you teach your son how to love, then the law is not going to change the way your son feels. That's exactly what happens in our film. Troy is, is miseducating Corey. He's telling him what he's not going to be able to do and what, how the white man is going to hold his son. Now, all those things, which aren't even necessarily true. Maybe they were more true, or maybe that's the way he felt about it in his time. But, uh, you know, it's up, to, it's up to the adult. It's up to the Troy. It's up to you. It's up to me to, to, to change the message. So, can I ask another question? No I, no, I don't have any money. No, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, one more. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so what is Hollywood's role in changing that? In, in I don't, you know, you say Hollywood. There's no place called Hollywood. You, you are part of Hollywood. I'm You're a part, part of, of the, the human now. race. I'm not a part of any system. I'm a human being. <laughs>